So in the critical of whirling speed of the shaft, we have a shaft mounted on the bearing. So these are the bearings here, two end supports. The central plate here, or we have a disc here. And this one is axis point O. So axis is exactly matching this. And let's say this rotor has a eccentric mass at distance equals to what? <coughs> e from the axis of rotor. Because of this eccentric mass, the center of gravity of this disc has been shifted to this side. G is equal to what? Center of rotor. Omega is the angular speed of the shaft. So M is the mass of this rotor and E is the eccentricity of the given rotor. So it is the initial distance of CG from the center of the shaft when the shaft is stationary. And now we will give the rotation to this one. So right now in this figure I will not show you rotation. As you start rotating this shaft at a speed equals to omega, the centrifugal mass right now at distance E will start experiencing a force and it is the centrifugal force which is given by Fc equals to mass into r into omega square and because of this centrifugal force this mass will tend to move downward because of this one we have the shaft is going to rotate in this fashion now the same curve will deflect on the other side also so it's a basically circular motion which is taking place now the point o will shift to new point here and the disc is shifted in a downward direction. Is it correct? The disc will come this way. Here. Because of this one, is the G point will also displace. So let's say the G point is additionally displaced. So let's say this displacement equal to what? Y. Extra displacement. And your G displacement will be, so this force will also move downward like this. So your G point will be somewhere here. So from O to G, your distance is what? E. So right now, what is the radial distance is? So this radial distance is what? Y plus E. So initially the shaft is here. As soon as you set in the rotation, the shaft itself going to bend because the shaft is flexible. And the additional distance equals to what? Y. So this was a stationary model and this one is a rotating model. Now since the shaft is deflected by distance y, so deflection of the shaft is what? Y. Because of this one is the shaft will pull back this force in the opposite direction. And this shaft, if the stiffness of the shaft is k, then we can write this equal to what? Ky. So is this force Ky will always oppose the centrifugal force m into r into omega square where r equal to what y plus e so are these two forces are continuously in dynamic equilibrium these are continuously in dynamic equilibrium so right the shaft will continue right restoring force the force restore the position of the disc so the restoring force is k into y and the centrifugal force is M. Radial distance is now Y plus E multiplied by omega square. We can expand this term. So we get KY equal to M into Y into omega square plus M into E into omega square. We can shift this term to the right side. We will get KY minus M into y into omega square equal to m into e into omega square so for the first two terms i think we can take out y common is it k minus m into omega square is equals to m into e <coughs> into omega square so can i find out my deflection y so y is equals to what? Me omega square upon k minus m omega square. So y is equals to m 
a to e a to omega square and whole thing is divided by minus m into omega square i can get rid of this m by dividing both numerator and denominator by m so what i get is into omega square is it k divided by m minus omega square yesterday we are know the k by m is natural frequency so omega n is under root of k by m this is natural frequency of vibration so we can very well replace this by omega n square so what i get is y equals to e times omega square upon this one is omega square omega n square minus omega square now actually i don't know what is omega n and what is omega n square so actually if omega n is more than omega n is more than omega square is this term is positive in that case y will come as positive and if omega n is less than omega square then is this term becomes negative so i have both possibility either plus or minus so i will write here plus minus because i don't know what is omega n so i write plus minus plus minus is written purposefully because we don't have relation of omega n minus omega if omega n is greater than omega we do select positive sign and if the omega is greater than omega n you have to select negative sign according to you adjust it and then i will divide numerator and denominator both by omega square so if i divide both numerator and denominator by omega square my final equation is y is equal to plus minus e divided by first term becomes omega n upon omega is it whole square minus 1 is it true now check the equation very carefully a by coincident omega n is equal to omega then is this value is 1 if this value is 1 then is it e divided by 0 so is this term will become infinity if omega equal to omega n it means that the deflection is what infinite and if the deflection is infinite will the shaft will break that is called as the critical speed so critical speed is nothing but what omega equal to omega n. 